Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode of On the Trail of Ansel Adams, we are going to shoot the Merced River. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful, the amazing, the incroyable city of Paris, France. But right now, I'm in Yosemite, California. And I'm on the trail of Ansel Adams. I've loved Ansel Adams' work for many years. We are not even in Yosemite, but it's so beautiful that we were driving by a river and I want to show you the first photo that I took and how I framed it and how I retouched it. Now, if you want to get the raw file of this episode, all you have to do is sign up on my website, put in your email address, and there you can access to all the free lessons. All you have to do is check the free lessons and you can download the source files for any of the lessons. All right, so let me show you my first day in Yosemite. All right, so I stopped the car as I was driving to the entrance of Yosemite because I saw this beautiful river that's all the, along the road. And there was, there, there was a little circle behind me. And I want to see if I can take a photo because I love taking photos of river. We are very lucky. We have a great uh, overcast, contrasty clouds making beautiful black and white on the trail of Ansel Adams going into Yosemite. I'm gonna go see if I can take a photo, but remember, I need three things. A foreground element, a middle ground, and a background. I know I've got a middle ground and a background. Now I'm looking for the foreground element. Let's find out. I'm loaded. Let's go. I need to find maybe a way to, uh, I see a lot of wave over there. I'm going to go to the wave because with long exposure, they make uh, very nice shapes, but I need to find a way to go down to the water, which I'm not sure I can from here, or I have to swim, but it might be hard. We'll see. Here I am, it's a bit slippery, so I got really good hiking shoes, which is important when you do this type of things because you don't want to slip in the water. What I'm trying to do is have the water flow between these two rocks as my foreground element. So I'm shooting very wide. I'm at 16 millimeter, very wide. So I want to play with that. I think it's very nice. It makes a leaded line into the water and with the mountains at the back and a bit of black and white sky. It's a great framing, it works perfect. I need to put on a filter. It's just too much light. So I'm gonna put an ND1000. I don't want a too long exposure. I think I'm, I want something like, uh, I'm gonna go to F7, because I don't need, I don't need like three minutes. So I'm gonna go to F7, ISO 100. Yeah. And I'm gonna try 20 seconds of exposure. Don't forget to put, you're timing on for two seconds, so you don't touch the photo when you shoot. And it's gonna shoot for 15 seconds. We'll see how that goes. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it, it's, I love the composition. I love the rocks in the foreground. I'm gonna try another one punching in at 35. Just a different framing more into the valley. See what's gonna happen, but I love this one. I make sure it's sharp, which I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, super sharp. Okay, so I'm gonna try a different framing. I'm gonna go higher up. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I'm punching at 35. I don't like how it looks because uh, you don't see anymore very nice the foreground. You, it's just the composition is less nice, you know? I think it's nicer when you see more of the mountain, more of the sky and more of the foreground. So it was not a good idea to punch it. I'm gonna book back at 16 and I'm gonna frame it more to the left so that I can see more of the flow. The, the flow of the water is more over here. So I'm gonna go back at 16. I'm on autofocus. 
at f7.1. Maybe I'm going to go f9 and 30 seconds so that I have a bit more flow to make sure my foot is really sharp. And because I have a rock here, I'm going to make sure I'm going to focus on a rock. So I'm punching in and I'm looking at the rock. Yeah, the rock is about 1 meter 50 away from me. So that's what I'm going to look at about yeah, 1 meter, 2 meters. So I'm at 2 meters now because I want to make sure that rock is really sharp. And I'm at F9, I should be good to go all the way. Let's see here. I'm going to go for 30 second exposure. 30 second exposure is long, might be a bit too long. Uh, that's, that's the problem with the ND1000, sometimes you get a bit too long of a long exposure. But we'll see. I'm going to try another filter, I'm going to put a polarizer on. Uh, because with the polarizer, I can go to about half a second of, uh, of slow by being at F16 or F18. So it's a whole different thing, but sometimes half a second is good enough to get just the flow and not too much flat water. I mean, it's nice at 30, it's really nice. Ooh, it's really nice. Okay, I'm going to try to go a bit lower to see if I can get a better composition. And because I took the time of coming down here, I'm going to also try a pano. I'm going to take one photo, two photos, three photos, each one with a bit of long exposure and see if I can stitch them together in Lightroom later on. Could be amazing, could be totally, you know, uh, not working, but you never know until you try, you know. So when I, when I take the time to come to a hard place like here, I'm not in, e in an easy position. I, you know, I try to use all the techniques I know, panorama, long exposure, different speed. Uh, you know, I just shoot because you never know what you can come up with. It's free here, you know, digital is free. Okay, I want to make sure that I got no uh, a rain spot on my, um, yeah, a bit of rain spot. So I'm going to wipe it out. It's always good to have a nice fiber cloth like this to clean up when there is rain. It doesn't rain much, but I think I can take a few more photos. So now, right now I'm trying something on an F22 and half a second. Half a second is going to give you a nice long exposure. I mean, a lot, not very long, but might be good enough. I'm going to take different shots and I'll see that if I can, you know, make them in, uh, in Lightroom. Okay, it's, it's a bit overexposed. So I tried to do it without the ND filter, but it doesn't work. I'm too overexposed, even though I went at 50 ISO and at F22, it's too much light. So I'm going to put back my ND1000 and I'm going to take three photos to make a panel of this river. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I put back the ND filter on. I'm at F10 and uh, I'm going to take three photos because I, I checked without the ND filter, I could only get half a second and I found that the, the water was not flowing enough. That's much better. I like much better as a look at 10 seconds and a half a second. So now I'm doing a pano. I'm doing a pano. I have my timer on and I'm doing it fast because it starts to rain. And, and very soon I won't be able to do it. I've been scouting a few different parts and I love these rocks, but when I came onto it, it's not nice enough because you see very little of the river. Uh, basically, the background is not very nice. I want to see something that's going out there. So yeah, sometimes you come and you know, you don't find what you like, then you have to climb back and voila. Okay, I pulled over the car because my friend Darius told me that there was a nice curve with smoky mountains, you know, when you have the, the clouds coming and making smoke on top. So I'm going to see if we can take a photo of having curve and smoky mountains in the back. Let's go.
So that's a spot that I find pretty cool because I cannot go down to the water, but here it's nice. There's one little tree as a foreground element. The grass is here is pretty pleasing. Then we have a curve and smoky mountains on back. Uh, it's not raining anymore, it's, and I'm going to try to do it with uh, normal speed, and then I'm going to try to do it with slow speed. See what works the best. Find the right composition. So let, let's check it out. So the first framing I'm going to do is I'm going to be at F22, 50 ISO, just to forcing a long exposure. It's going to be like one fifth of a second. So it's not, it's not very fast, but it should help to have the water a bit more pleasing. I'm trying to make a frame with that tree here and uh, some of the Smoky Mountains and of course the river in the middle. Um, I'm not sure it's going to work without an any filter, but let's give it a try. So F22, one fifth of a second, let's see. I'm at almost at 60 millimeter, very wide, and let's see. It's not bad, but that tree there is, annoys me. It's too close to the border. When you make a landscape photo, it's very important. You look around your border of your photo, make sure you don't have like one major element that's half there. And that tree was half there, so I'm going to punch in a little more to erase that tree. Problem on this one is that even at F22, when I do one fifth of a second, I get a, the water is kind of nice, but the sky is blown away. So I'm going to have to put back my ND1000 and go like at 10 seconds. But you know, there are worse things in life than having to do that. Make sure it's clean with the glass before you put it. Make sure the lens is clean and this is clean. Very, very useful to have that when it rains a little bit like this. All right, so now I'm at ISO 100, ND1000 on. There's a lot of light, so I'm gonna try at six seconds, see if it's too dark or not too dark. Don't forget the self timer, two seconds. Yeah, six seconds is, is way too dark. I'm going now for 20 seconds, from six to 20, we'll see. So at 20, the, the water looks great. Uh, the trees looks all right but the sky is a bit blown out, but I have the six seconds where the clouds are great. So I can mix them both if I want in Photoshop. If by putting the highlights in Lightroom, I don't get what I want with the 20 second, I can just use the six second. I'll show this to you in the tutorial. Now I'm gonna try different framing, see if I can do better with this scene. I'm gonna try to go Hansel Adams style. He does a lot of um, uh, portrait photo, not landscape, but portraits. I wanna try to use uh, the water to really feel the frame and I have very little clouds. We'll see if it works. So I went into a portrait mode and I love it. It fills the frame a lot more and it does a contrast with the water coming in. So I'm gonna take the one at 20 seconds and I'm gonna take another one at six seconds so that I have the info of the sky. I'm afraid that the 20 seconds is gonna be great for the trees, for the water, but not for the sky. So, first the 20 second. And the good thing about the, the portrait mode is that is now the tree has more space. It's breathing. The river is breathing. There is more space around it. I find it a more pleasing uh, frame. It works better on this one. So 20 second, let's see. I'm excited. It could be great. It could be bad. Ooh. I'm blown away, I'm blown away. And the, the exposure is so good that I have the sky, I have everything in one photo. I don't even need to take a second one. I'm super happy, I just wanna make sure it's sharp. Good that I checked, it's not sharp at all. So something went wrong on my autofocus. I'm gonna put it on manual focus and I'm gonna focus it myself in manual because something went wrong on the focusing. So I went in manual focus and I, I focused at eight meters. Eight meters at F11, I think, or F9, I forgot. I have to see when it's done. Should give me a good, good, good depth of field. But that's one thing, you always have to check your photos are in focus by punching in 100%. And good that I did that because it was not. So the photo is kind of sharp, the rocks are sharp, but with the wind in the 20 second, uh, all the branches are a bit blurry. So what I want to do is I'm going to boost the ISO a little bit and I'm gonna go at F7 and try like four seconds or three seconds instead of 20 and see how the photo looks. So the ND1000 the ND was an overkill. Uh, so I'm gonna put an ND variable and I just wanna have like two, three seconds of exposure. I think it's gonna be good enough. But I wanna be at 100 ISO and I wanna be at uh, not over four or five seconds because then it gets too blurry on the leaf. 
So that's where the ND filter variable is really cool. All right, so I put an ND variable filter on it and um, it's a Tiffin one, it's a, it's a nice one. So this way I was able to get a good exposure at one second only. One second is good enough when the water is flowing so fast. And I'll see in Lightroom, you know, what I like more between the 20 second, the one second, the six second, I got different choices. I love the framing and we'll see what we can do in Lightroom on this one. But I love that photo. Right, so I'm back in the warm of my studio with Lightroom and I'm ready to retouch the photo. That's the final photo we're going to retouch today. That's my best one out of this Merced River series. But before we get started, I just want to re-mention in case you don't know, go to photosearch.com and click on my gear. Uh, I am an authorized affinity partner with uh, Adobe. When you click on that, you come to this page and it's going to detect which country you are in. And based on the country you are in, it's going to give you a special price for the uh, Creative Cloud Photography, which is Lightroom and Photoshop. Usually for the US, it's $9.99. And so you have it because I'm in the US right now at $7.99. So you, you have basically 20% less on the Creative Cloud Photography if you go through my website to buy it. Pretty cool deal. Um, I can tell you that it's such, I mean, you can buy Lightroom for a standard version at 150, but you cannot buy any more Photoshop. And I used to buy a Photoshop version every, I would say two years. It was like six, $700. And now for like $7.99, you get Photoshop and Lightroom for two coffee at Starbucks and not even like small coffee at Starbucks. Anyway, that's just what I want to say. Let's get started. So before I talk to you about the finished photo, let's go through a little bit the photo that I've got so far. That's the first photo that I shot. If you press I on your keyboard, you can see uh, that it was shot at 20 seconds at 7.1. I kind of like this one, but I don't like that the fact that the rock is touching the frame here. I like the, how the water is flowing. I like the fact that we have some details in the sky. And this is the, the raw file. Raw files are usually pretty neutral. They don't have contrast, not much saturation, not much is going on. Uh, the second one, remember in the video, I kind of went, uh, because this one you can see also that it was shot at 16 millimeter. Then I went at 35 millimeter, and this, I don't like the composition at all. You can see a little bit of the rock here. You can see better the mountains but and the water, but I don't know. I just don't like that framing. So I went back to 16, uh, and this time I put on a, a, an, well, I did actually had an ND 1000 filter on, giving me at F9 a 30 second exposure. I think the rock is pretty sharp, and the trees are pretty sharp also. I think I could do better. If I was at f22, the problem is that I would get a very long exposure and I would probably lose some of the flow in the water. I didn't want that. And I thought this was sharp enough for me. So I kind of like that. Then what did I try? Uh, oh, yeah. Then I tried to put on an, uh, a polarizer on. I put my ISO at 50. So I made my sensor the less sensible possible. I'd, I went to f22. So I had made my aperture as close as possible. So there was little light coming. And the longer exposure I could get was 0.6 of a second. But you see, it's still the, the, the sky is overblown. I mean, we can see maybe there's a bit of details in the sky. Uh, with bringing down the highlights. Yeah, there is a little bit, but it's, I don't know. I, I find that I actually like more as a, as a 20 second exposure, how the water is flowing than the half a second exposure, personally. So then uh, what did I try it again? This was again at half a second. Uh, I didn't like the flow. This was again half a second. Oh, then I started doing a pano. I did a pano, one photo, two photo, three photo at half a second, but the sky is too blown out for me. So I put back my ND filter and this is the three photo that I decided to retouch. So that's the original file. This one is only a 10 second. So I made a smaller exposure, making the whole photo much more uh, dark. So that's photo number one, that's photo number two, and that's photo number three. Then all I did is I, that's the raw file not retouch. I selected all three, went to edit, oh sorry, photo merge, panorama. And then when you go to panorama, and that's great because that's only with since Lightroom CC, that's why you should really get Lightroom CC because for fast panoramas like this, it's amazing. Uh, so uh, that's the perspective dialogue, which I you have three projections, perspective, uh, perspective does not work if you've got elements which are big and are very close to your frame like this. But if you go to auto select projection, it's probably going to take spherical or cylindrical. It took spherical and it did a pretty good job. But you also have the possibility to auto crop, 
which you could or not do. I kind of do it always. Let's see what cylindrical is going to be. Cylindrical is not bad. Uh, cylindrical is not bad. I like this. And you have a new option, which I really like. It's called the boundary warp. Instead of doing the auto crop, you can just click here and it's going to sort of fill the frame, change and boom, and make your photo fit the frame. Okay, now I'm not going to click on merge. It's going to take a lot of time. This is how the panel is once I merged it. I already prepared it and now I'm ready to retouch. So if you've watched episode number one of my Yosemite, you know that I created some basic, um, what I call the Ansel Adams uh, Lightroom presets. The first one is called basic. It's this one here. And you can get this for free if you subscribe to my daily newsletter and you go to this episode and you download the source file. Every There will be six or seven Yosemite episodes. Every episode will have this Ansel Adams basic um, Lightroom preset. So if I click on the first one, I get a pretty much black and white. Uh, I still need to do some tweak on it, but it's a pretty straightforward. Um, if I click on the number two, I get uh, Ansel Adams plus a little bit of Surge Remedy with a, a graded filter here, which on this one I think doesn't work. But you can always just click on the graded filter and you raise them and you basically come back to uh, almost the number one photo. And then you have the Ansel Adams Regal uh, Dark, Light and Medium. I think Medium would work pretty well on this photo. So you can either use a preset or you can do from scratch, which I'm going to do very fast. So I'm going to go into my, um, well, no, actually, you know what? I'm going to open up my shadows and bring down my highlights. You've seen me do this over and over. Then I'm going to do my black point, a very strong black point, And then I'm going to do my white point, holding the alt key so I can see where I'm going. Watch some of my other tutorials if you don't know, uh, if you're not very familiar with uh, th this, my workflow on this. Then I'm going to go into the black and white and I'm going to click here on the on this thing and on the um, target tool I'm going to click on the sky I'm going to make the sky a little darker I'm going to click and drop drag and drop at the bottom that's just going to make the sky a bit a bit darker okay now I this photo seriously needs some more contrast I'm just going to add contrast and um, I'm going to press I to take this out I'm going to clean up the photo using the uh, here at this uh, spot hitting brush tool uh, there is a little spot here I think and I think I'm going to make this whole photo more dense. So I'm going to just lower the entire exposure of the photo just a little bit more. Okay, on this one, and I'm going to take a little brush. Uh, I'm going to go into exposure, boost a little bit my brush. And I just want to make the whites here in the photo a bit brighter. Uh, voila. And I'm not going to spend much more to uh, maybe make this rock a little bit brighter and this a little bit brighter. Uh, I think it's interesting. I could add here some circle here invert the mask just a little bit to uh, because i think this whole block is very uh evenly led so i want to see if i can break that a little bit that's kind of my sp special formula uh but don't make it too much don't make it like this you should make it in a way so that hardly pe can people can hardly notice it maybe one here and when you're happy you can duplicate it and put another one here but that is not the photo that I want to read. I mean, I like this photo, but it's not the best one. The best one is a bit further down the road. So that was a second spot. So that's the first photo that I took. I kind of like the Farmin. I like that tree that's leaning in the water. Uh, this is what? This is a half a second exposure. But half a second, I didn't like what it did. I think the water was too much of a high frequency texture. What I mean by high frequency texture is that there is a lot of l small information. You know, when you do longer exposure, uh, the waves are bigger, they're not all tiny and small, and so it makes just less information and less is good in photography. Because when you've got too much texture, too many things going on, it, you don't know where to look anymore. So always try to simplify your composition is nice. And one good way of doing that is lone exposure. So I put my ND1000 filter on and boom, no, look at the water, it's got less wave. Uh, this is a six second exposure, it's a bit too dark. But I didn't like so much the framing, so I tried the uh, portrait mode, which is uh, often what Ansel Adams used to do, and I really like this one, except that I made something wrong with the autofocus, and this one is completely blurry, at 20 second f11. So I shot it again, and uh, I was blurry again. Something was going wrong with my autofocus. I was trying to do autofocus. So then I said, okay, I'm going to go into manual focus, and I'm going to put an ND variable on. 
uh, if you go to my gear page on my website, you will see what an ND variable is. It's basically you can go instead of being at ND 1000, you can go to lower values, and this time you don't have to go to 10 seconds. So I just put, I, I was at 6.3. And, uh, and look how sharp this photo is. 6.3, everything was sharp because I didn't have any elements that I really wanted to be sharp in the foreground. So 6.3 was enough. With the variable, I had the 3.2 second. Much more pleasing image. And that's the one I'm going to retouch. So I can go to my AA basic and boom, it's already pretty cool. Then I can go to my AA gradient filter. I kind of like that, but I think this is too much. So I'm going to click here and I have two gradient. I'm going to erase one and the second one, I'm going to make it uh, much more gradient and much more smooth. I like the idea of having, I mean, the, the variable filter anyway was giving me this dark sky naturally in the photo. So I just made it a bit more strong. I'll show you the before and after. It's very subtle. I mean, it's not that subtle. It's not that subtle. I think she's a bit too much. So I'm actually going to, uh, I don't want it that much. I don't want people to go, Oh, you made this darker. Okay. So, I'm going to make it just a little more subtle, like 0.32, bring this back, okay, before, after, yeah, that's much more subtle, that's more, it's it's really like having an, a graded filter for real in the field, you know, you have so much dynamic range with this modern DSLR, this is a Sony A7R2, and I'm going to give you this raw file so you can play around with it, it's actually probably one of my favorite landscape ever, I really love it, uh, I think this one is just a little tap too dark, so I'm going to Make it a bit brighter. Let's check my blacks. My blacks are strong. Let's check my whites. I can maybe go more crazy on the whites. And um, I kind of like that, but I think this is a bit too dark around here. So I'm going to take the graded filter. I'm going to take the circle that I showed you before and I'm going to do the same technique. Uh, just make sure you don't do it too much. Uh, okay, that is way too much. So, oops. Just a little bit, a tiny bit of light. I'm going to duplicate it and put one here, maybe add a little bit of light here, you know, and I've seen, uh, I, I had a friend who was, I was saying this in the first video, who was doing this in the 70s, and she was showing me that on some of the photos, she did 20 circles, and very famous photographer used to do that, they had like this, uh, basically like, it looked like a little spoon, and it would stop the light from hitting the paper, um, and uh, with the enlarger, and so they could brighten some part of the photo. And she was telling me like how she was shaking the spoon all over to make this uh, a bit brighter here and a bit brighter there. It was pretty interesting. It's so much easier not to enlighten. Just don't overdo it. Uh, maybe just a little bit here. And voila, I think my original, let's see, that's my original retouch of this photo. And uh, that's what we just did today. I think it's pretty similar. Oh, there is a graded filter here at the bottom, which I think is annoying. I might just erase it, yeah. So, you know, less is more on this one. Hardly any local ad adjustment, just a little gray filter on top, uh, you know, but let me see without. Yeah, I, can, I like to keep it. And I really like this photo. I think it might be just a little bit dark. And as usual, what I do is I, uh, you know, I let it rest a little bit and I come back to it. Uh, I come back to it another time and see, well, you know what? I think I want to make some of this water a bit brighter. I just want to make this a little bit brighter, some of the river. I really want the eyes of the viewer to go through the river and into the Smoky Mountains here. I think it's kind of cool. And I like how the sky, how, I like how the greater filter that was already there made this part of the sky a bit brighter. So it really guides the view. I like this whole, I really like it. Let me show it to you in full screen with the black around it. So that's today's uh, Yosemite uh, Mercy River. It's one of my favorite shot of a river i hope you like it if you like that style and voila don't forget to download and play one with my yosemite lightroom presets you will be surprised what they can do to your photo because dramatic black and white is amazing if you want to know more about this type of things do not hesitate to go uh, to my website photosearch.com if you click on tutorials uh, you will see there's one course where i really go into details on retouching a lightroom it's a lightroom cc complete training I'm going to give you an extra discount if you put in the code PLP245. Voila, I hope you like it and I'll see you in another episode in the Yosemite. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email, you can then create an account and then you can access this free lesson tab you can choose from over 200 free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have 
source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing. No money, it's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome and let's do some photos together.